friends and welcome back. My name is Deepa from Designs by D and this is the last video for the November Club Kits by Spellbinders that I'm going to be sharing this month. It has been such a doozy of the last few weeks. I have a ton of birthdays at the end of October so I'm sorry I'm not going to have a video for the APG die and the embossing folder of the month but I will share a reel so do look out for that. Um, Today we're looking at the large and the small die of the month and both of these sets are gorgeous. I am absolutely in love with the small die of the month. You, If you look at it, it has, the design is basically the same idea as the glimmer kit. So you can imagine both of them work perfectly together. And then the large die of the month is one of the card creator kaleidoscope dies. So this one is pretty much self-explanatory. You just put everything together and your card looks gorgeous. So little of you know thinking about a color scheme this uh, set is perfect for cards that don't require too much thinking so I actually looked at a card that I created last year and it's this one here on my blog I love the color scheme of this with the yellows and the reds and the greens. so I'm gonna go ahead and use that again today now I like to do this for all my cards I always find a color scheme that works well because when you have a great color scheme your card just stands out way more now, if you know me, I like to kind of color my own cardstock, so that's what I'm doing here. The best way to do this is to use inks where you have reinkers because you don't want to be drying out your ink pads just by applying the ink to cardstock. So I have my Alta New inks here. I'm using Frayed Leaf and I have all of the reinkers and I've made that pad nice and juicy before doing this. Now keep in mind, you can see some streaks there where they overlap, don't worry about it. Once it all dries, it all evens out, it's cut out by the dye, you're not going to notice any of that. So you can see I dried it up with my uh, heat tool and I'm just placing it under my ink tin to kind of flatten it out as it um, cools down. Now when you put that through your die cutting machi machine, it's going to flatten out as well. Now I'm just grabbing my white, plain white cardstock and I'm cutting out all of the other little pieces that come with this set. So all the little flowers and then I'm also taking a few of those pieces that are the accent of the flowers and I'm cutting them out with some gold glitter cardstock. Now don't throw away the negative pieces for the white cardstock because now I'm going to use them to add ink to the die cuts. So I'm just adding some washi tape on the back so that um, there's a bit of stickiness through where the die had cut and then I can kind of just inlay my pieces and then add ink as I see fit. So for the flowers I'm going to be adding some rouge to the larger area of flowers and then the outline of the flower I'm using crimson which is a bit darker and I'm using my um, my blending tool at first but you can see that you can kind of add ink in whichever way that you want you could actually add ink to the cardstock and then cut out your die cuts um, I decided to just kind of use the ink pad and just smush it onto the die cuts because I do have the smaller ink cubes here the only issue with that is when you have them inlaid like this, the edges still end up being white. So you will have to use a blending tool to kind of just get all those extra white bits and to make sure it's fully colored in. Now I'll do the same thing with that little bell flower. And for this one, I'm using yellows. So I'm using some honey drizzle for like the smaller portion and the larger portion of the flower, I'm using some fresh lemon. So here, once I'm done, I'll just pull them out of the, um, the negative piece and then I'll move on to my leaves. So I've already set those in place and I'm just using some evergreen and you can see as I add it, it's got like this white outline. So that's where the brush comes in handy to fill in all those white bits. I actually think the easier way to do this would be to color your like little scraps of cardstock. So this is perfect for using up your scraps of white cardstock from your card bases and then cutting out your dies. But um, I decided to do it this way because I didn't want to wait for everything to dry and I didn't want to use my heat tool to dry everything. So for the actual larger floral background here, or I guess you would call it like a flourish, I cut out one piece from um, from white cardstock and then I cut out the frayed leaf ink colored piece and I just attached the two together just to make it a bit more sturdy because when you do add ink to the cardstock it kind of thins out the cardstock just a little bit because it's absorbing that ink and then when you die cut it you're squashing the cardstock a little bit as well so it's very important to make sure your cardstock is completely dry before you die cut. Now. 
I'm going ahead and I'm putting together the flowers. You can see I put the crimson red outline on top of the rouge and now I'm adding the gold glitter outline. I'm doing the same thing for the smaller flower and you can see I actually have an extra little piece of the flower up near that larger flower. That's actually the inside portion of that second layer of the large flower. So when you cut out that outline, you get that inside portion. So you can actually use that to layer with your smaller flower and just give it a bit more of dimension. In this case, I added velvet, which is the darkest color of that color family to that die cut. Now I'm also adding the leaves. Those are added directly to that flourish piece or that big background piece. And if you wanted to, you could have kind of cut out those little vines in, uh, um, from the white cardstock and added a different color to them as well just to give it a bit more interest and a bit more detail. Now for the bell flowers you actually have that um, that bit that kind of looks like a flattened cloud so you add that to the top and then I've also got the little center that was cut out of the glitter cardstock to add. Now for the bell flower I actually cut out two of these so I could make two of these flowers but really if you want you could cut out as many of the flowers as you want and place them wherever you want. And that's what I think is the um, the great part about this set is that there are places where you should put certain flowers, but you could also kind of change up the design completely. So every time you make this flourish, it's not going to look exactly the same. You can make it look different and unique to your card. And that's actually exactly what I'm going to do here. Now I'm putting together those little berry bits, which actually are my favorite part or of this design and the glimmer kit design the you can see that the style of the flowers and the flourish are exactly the same for both which is why they would actually look really well together if maybe you um, glimmered up and added like those back those glimmer pieces to maybe a background of a card and then took the flourish and maybe cut it up a bit and made that the focal point I think they would look so great together Actually, no, if I do get a chance, I will actually give that a try and post it on my Instagram account for you guys to take a look at. Now for the background, I'm using this blue cardstock panel. It's cut to four and three quarters by six and three quarters. So we're going to be making a five by seven inch card. And now I've got the stitch ornament outline. So this is from a set that was released from the Stitch Mitch Christmas collection. Um, a few months ago I think during the summer so I'm going to use this outline ornament die and I'm going to cut the ornament from the center of the blue panel. Now I'm also going to be adding some glimmering of the sentiment at the bottom and I'm going to be using Yana's um, method for embossing to allow for your glimmer foiled sentiments to show. So first of all I've kind of positioned my ornament where I want it. I'm adding some washi tape to hold it in place and I'll cut it put it through my die cutting machine. Now once that is done, I'll go ahead and add my glimmer plate. So I'm using Yana's Christmas Sentiments. This is a bit of an older set, but it's such a great one. It has some great scripty sentiments for um, your main sentiment and then some carols or verses of carols for the sub sentiment. So I'm using Merry Christmas and All is Calm and All is Bright here. And I'm going to be foiling it with some matte gold foil. And so you can see that I positioned everything and I did cut that ornament, not directly in the center of the panel, but a bit further up to allow for the foiling. So now that that foiling is all nice and done, I can go ahead and emboss this. And you can see that came out nicely. Okay, so the trick with this is to make sure that this is lined up in a straight line so that it doesn't look wonky or awkward with your sentiment. Now I'm just going to eye it, eyeball it and kind of make sure it's straight with the edge of the folder and the base of the panel. But you can actually just draw a line to make sure you're 100% straight with a T ruler. I'm going to add a little bit of water and put it through my die cutting machine um, to emboss it and you can see the results are gorgeous. So now I've cut my card base, which is five by seven. It's a white card base. And what I'm gonna end up doing is putting this little flourish um, piece and having it show through the ornament. Now, at first I kind of just wanted it in the background, but the way that it is, uh, not a lot of the flowers and stuff show up. So I decided what I do is kind of pull out the little stems and the flowers so they, they kind of hang over the ornament outline. And you can see that I also detached that smaller flower because 
if I were to keep it in its spot where it's supposed to go, it wouldn't be seen through the ornament. So I'm going to just place it somewhere else. And here I've just kind of decided where I want everything to go. And I'll also cut the little topper of the ornament, which I cut out of some gold mirror cardstock to place on top. Okay, so I showed you that portion there where I planned everything out. I actually do that with all of my cards, but I don't always show it in all of my videos because it takes some extra time. I had some time here, so I showed you, and I find that it's something really important you need to do to kind of get an idea of how everything looks before you glue everything down. And I find that it works well for me. Sometimes you don't always place everything back exactly where you had them originally, but that's completely okay. So what I've done here is kind of glued the overhanging pieces at the top of the ornament and now I've got to deal with the bottom piece. So I'm actually cutting off that little flower and I really want this other little, you know I said my favorite piece there that um, those little berries, I kind of want that to hang over the bottom as well. So I'm pulling that through and then I'll glue it down to the embossed panel as well so that you have all of these beautiful little you know floral and flourish pieces kind of hanging over the ornament outline so once i have everything kind of adhered where i want it now i've added a bunch of foam circles in this case and i'm attaching this to my card base and the foam is actually a pretty thin foam so it's not sticking up too high but it's enough to give it a bit of space so that there's a little bit of um, dimension in between the flourish and the ornament outline so now I've gone ahead and I've added the little flowers and I've done this with some foam squares to give them some more dimension. This would probably look really nice if you were able to place that flourish on with some foam squares as well. It would have a lot more pop to it. Now to finish this card up, I'm adding some gems. I've got some clear iridescent drops and then I'm also going to be adding some gold matte pearls to the little round flourish pieces of the... Um, the leaves I'm notice that I'm using flourish a lot here but I really just don't know what to call that background piece that you attach all of the flowers to but I could imagine it'd be called a flourish <laughs> okay so that card is done let's move on to the card creator kaleidoscope here so this one is a slimline card and this is the card I made with it and all I really did was I took the two um, outer frames I attached them with some washi tape and then I cut them using some gold metallic uh, cardstock. This is actually the cardstock that comes with the card kit. It's really nice. And when you cut with this, everything just comes like there's no punching the little pieces through it. It all just, you know, cuts perfectly. So I attached those to um, the blue, the dark blue card base, which is just a little bit smaller than three and a half by eight and a half inches with some foam. Then I uh, cut out these kaleidoscope pieces. Um, so I've got three of them and I cut them out three times. I used a light pink, a darker pink and some gold glitter cardstock. And then I just attached those together to create the kaleidoscope. I attached all three kaleidoscope pieces to their sections on that gold frame with some foam. And then I went ahead and I cut out the sentiment, the happy birthday strip. And that was cut out of some white cardstock. For the actual, um, you know, detail pieces, you've got two leaf pieces. One cuts out that white background and then one cuts out the gold glitter frame. I just attached those and then kind of just inset them behind the sentiment with some foam. Squares, these are the foam squares from the card kit and these are great to use because they have a lot of dimension. Now what I want to show you here is this happy birthday um, die has, you know, the happy birthday embossed on there. So you could actually foil that and get a nice foiled piece out of it as well. I didn't do that here, but it's definitely an idea for the future. Now I have the bell flower from the small die kit and I use those to cut out two bell flowers out of some white and gold cardstock and I added those on here as well. Then to finish it up, I added some clear gems and you can see how easy that one is to put together with like, as I said, not too much thinking. So those are my two cards sharing the large and the small die of the month for November from Spellbinders. I hope that you've been inspired to create something similar yourself. And if you have, please go ahead and tag me if you were um, inspired by me. I'd love to see what you guys make. Don't forget that all the products that I've used, um, they're linked 
through the share sale link in the description below. They're also linked within my blog, which is linked in the description below. If you have any questions, don't forget to comment and don't forget to subscribe and like. As I said, I'll be posting um, a reel or I guess a video short on YouTube. Of this, I'll also be posting the reel of um, the APG die and the embossing folder on my Instagram account a bit later this week. So I hope you all have a great day, guys, and I hope to see you guys again. Thank you. Bye.